vacation. I know. <laughs> right. right. Don't look into the light. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all for joining tonight. I thought maybe just to start, since all of you have, most of you have worked with Woody before, if you guys could maybe start by talking about the first time you worked with him or how you met him or how you came into Woody's orbit as a filmmaker. Well, for me, it was 15 years ago, and I've done 15 films in 15 years with Woody. Wow. And you're the, you're the you're his editor. I'm his editor, and I had heard he was looking for a new editor, and I thought it must be a mistake that I got this phone call, but how exciting that I'm going to get to meet him, and that would be enough. And then when they offered me the job, I you know, was obviously extremely thrilled, and it's, I've been very, very, very fortunate. And what was the first so, movie that you had? It was Sweet and Lowdown with Sean Penn, which is a wonderful film. And um, so, you know, he is the most prolific filmmaker. It's incredible that he makes a film a year. And um, it's just been a great ride for me. Susie? Um, I met Woody, I think, it must have been 16 years ago. And I went into what I thought was an interview for the job. And I said, hi, I'm Susie Benzinger. And he said, yes. And he said, well, do you want to do it? And I said, well, I, I think so. And he goes, oh, well, great. He and said, that's costume good. costume design. This is he, costume design. And um, he said, oh, great. And, and I said, oh, well, how do you work? And he said, well, you know, I write a script. and. Then you get the script, and then Santo gets the script, and you get the script, and then you, you do it. <laughs> and that was it. And I said, okay. And that was my interview, and that's how it started, I guess. And what movie was that for? Um, actually, it was um, a made-for-TV movie called Don't Drink the Water with Michael J. Fox. <laughs> and it was, I think, only on TV maybe once, probably. But then you worked on movies like Celebrity. A celebrity and Deconstructing Harry and... Um, Oh my gosh, let me think. <laughs> the Larry David. Whatever works. Well, thank you. Whatever works. I don't have a memory, which doesn't help. Um, yeah, so it's. I've done a few since then. Bobby? Uh, I got a call, um, I guess about six months before the, we shot, and my agent said, uh, Woody Allen wants to meet you, but they didn't know anything. And I said, Wow, I'm going to meet Woody Allen, cool. And, um, and I didn't know anything, and so I went in and. Julia Taylor said to me, I got there and it was really cold and I started taking my coat off. She said, honey, you can take off your coat, but it might take you longer to take the coat off than the meeting lasts. And I had heard that like he, some, like he might not even look at me or talk to me. And so I, I was ready, you know, I just thought, I want to shake his hand. And, um, and he was such a mensch. I was in there for like 20 minutes. It was a long time. And, and he said, and he kept t squeezing my shoulders and he kept going, oh, you're big, you're big. <laughs> 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 and I was like laughing. I was like, he started to tickle a little bit, and then he kind of cracked up, and and then he and then he said to me, you know, uh, you, you're very good. My sources tell me you're always very good, and we laughed about that. And he said, you have sor your sources. And he said, I have a lot of sources. <laughs> and then he said, um, and he said, can you give me three weeks in August? And I said, yes. And I, I had no idea if I could do that because I was working on Boardwalk Empire, and I knew I was working till November on that. But I just said yes, and then. Um, and that was it. He sent me a lovely note and um, and uh, and my scenes. And I had two hours to read my scenes, and then I had to give them back to this woman. <laughs> she was waiting oh in my, my God. I living room. And, uh, I went to the so you couldn't keep you couldn't keep the script. I couldn't. I didn't have the script. I just had my scenes. But it was pretty heavy, so I was like, oh, "That's a good part." <laughs> and um, and she waited in my living room, and I and I went in my bathroom and like smoked out the window and read this read my scenes a couple of times, and and I was like, "Yeah." And the funny thing about the note was, he said, "If you don't like it, it's fine." Well, it said I know exactly what it said. It said um, he said, "Take a look. His name is." Kevin now, but I'm going to change it and make him sound less Irish. <laughs> and I was so glad he changed it to Chili, it's a better name. And then he said, if you don't like it, it's fine, just pass. I'm going to come to you for the musical version of Bullets Over Broadway. Maybe you'll get to do both. It's the best letter, it's the only thing I've ever saved. And, um, and then he did it, and then, I'm like, and then I did a workshop of that musical you know, a year later, but that's how I met him. <laughs> Um, Sally, you worked on his name as a dream I, I did. So I, I met him um, for that. Um, 
I did a screen test in London, and then I was happened to be working in New York, um, and I had this uh, blonde hair uh, for this part, like this peroxide hair. Hideous. <laughs> Uh, um, and, um, was that yours? Was that your? No, 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 no. no. It was for another thing. Oh, no, no, no. Totally, no. Um, but he obviously liked the blonde for the part. But I, I, it was a similar um, way of meeting. It's very fast. You sort of. Uh, it, I don't even know if I read for Cassandra's dream. It's just he saw um, my screen test. That it came from London, and uh, he obviously liked that and thought it was right for the part. He just said, yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> just um, great <laughs> to meet you. And, um, and that was it. I didn't really, I, didn't, I don't think I read for Cassandra's Dream then. And then, yeah, it's very brief. He, he just, he, he doesn't have much time, would really. he? So, <laughs> you get the feeling. <laughs> he cuts it short. <laughs> and this one, it was similar. I was uh, lucky enough to be working in New York at the time, and he, while well, he was, and he happened to be casting, and and I, I went along to the same um, uh, sort of uh, his, his office, which is like this place I thought I'd never see again or find again. <laughs> it was like, it's like um, Alice in Wonderland. You go through a glass door and through another door and suddenly you're in Woody's editing studio that's been there since the 1970s, I expect, and um, just felt like a sacred place. So, I, um, yeah, it was very quick. I, like Bobby, I got this scene um, and uh, was sat with it for a few minutes or ten minutes while he, um, while I, he went away and then I came back and read um, uh, for him, and it was very, yeah, it was very brief. And then I got called back a few days later, and and then I was lucky enough to get to get the script. But um, after I knew I had the job, so you got the full script. You only got your yeah. scenes. Yeah. yeah, but she hooked me up. I did not. <laughs> but I gotta say, I, at least I, I felt like I knew enough from the scenes, like. You know, you're, in the, you're in most of the movies. Yeah, so I got it. I, it. It made sense to me. Yeah. No, 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 she didn't do that. <laughs> as actors, did you guys, because I know that you, Kate has had a lot of experience as a stage actor, and, and the two of you have too. Did you get to rehearse at all? Did you get to, before you started filming, or was there a rehearsal period? No. 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 Uh, no. I didn't see Woody again. I, I didn't see Woody again until six months later, the very first literally on the set. You know, that first day we shot, I shot all my scenes in order. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. Shot yeah, like 13 yes. out of 14 days in San Francisco. And my first day on set, you know, it's that thing, you don't sleep the night before, and then you get there at 5.30 in the morning, and then, you know, I put those clothes on, and I was like, for hours I was in that outfit, you know, with the gold and the tank top and those awful <laughs> jeans. And, and the sunglasses, and Susie trying different sunglasses on me. And it was hours before I got to set, and then I thought, oh, now I'm gonna get to set and talk to Woody. And it, it was already blocked, remember? Yeah. Like, it was already, he'd already blocked it. And he didn't say, you know, good to see you again, nothing. He just, literally, I walked on set and he went, okay, Bobby, you're gonna come here, and you're gonna walk to here, and then you're gonna sit. No hello, nothing. It was amazing. <laughs> I hadn't seen him in like six months. <laughs> and, uh, and so we just we just did it. And um, and I remember like I, I, the the very first thing we did, I wanted to change something. Remember that was when I had when I wanted to kiss Kate. Yeah. And I was like, shit, I don't know if I should say something. And then I was like, I gotta say something. I really want to do this. So I took a chance, I did, and he liked it, and he was like, oh, okay, you want to kiss Kate? Oh, that's funny, okay, do that. <laughs> then make sure you come back to here. <laughs> so we did it. And that was it, it's just very sort of cut and dry with Woody, you know? You just sort of show up, and he expects you to know what you're doing, and, and just do it. Sally, this is the very first time you've ever played an American, is that correct? Uh, in public, yes. On my own personal time, yeah. Um, yes, yes, yeah. 
<laughs> so how did you how did you get a grasp on the accent? Was the accent the first part of the character that you kind of? Um, uh, yes, I think it, it was. Um, I was lucky enough to be working with phenomenal accent coach uh, Carla Myers and uh, Kate. It was uh, thanks to Kate that she was on set and uh, she could be there for Kate and I to sort of um, grab hold of whenever we needed. And um, I started work in London. Um, but I, I was desperate to get to America to just, uh, because there's only so much you can do when you're on the other side of the world. And, um, but I still think of it as a work in progress. <laughs> I still think, um, and it, you know, you can always, it's always changing depending on which character you are playing and always be specific to them. And, um, so yeah, she, she's, she's an amalgam of many different accents, I think, <coughs> so she's, and she sort of adapts to whoever she's with as well. She, she takes on sort of um, different accents as well because of the creature that she is. Yeah. Had you and Kate met before you started filming, or did you, uh, did you we know? Did. We did. We had, it was lucky enough that we had that time, and it was so, it was key for me to, to... So you uh, came to New York and she was, was she here? I was, um, in New York with Susie and uh, prepping the costume, and that time for me was just <coughs> so invaluable. I mean, it was um, important, really important, and, and I think we were in contact that time as well. And yeah, we took a couple walks through the park, <laughs> 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 yeah. took coffees. Yes, we did. Yeah, we, had, yeah. we had some good conversations. Yeah. yeah, and that was really useful. Yeah, totally. For us. I mean, that's what we decided. We, in our, I remember we were walking through Central Park, and I was like, I remember saying to you, I think we're really physical. Remember? I was like, <laughs> I think we're all over each other. Let's make that choice. Okay, okay. And she was like, that's what she said. She went, yeah, okay, sure. Okay. Cool. That's, yeah, that sounds good. great. We didn't have that much time together. Um, but we, we, we uh, met through a mutual friend yeah, right. uh, um, when I was on stage in New York a few years earlier. So I was really. That that felt I, I was very grateful for that that yeah. I knew Bobby and and um, uh, and and then having that time with Kate in a similar way because she was on stage at the time on, with Uncle Vanya and she was very generous with her time even though she was playing at night and so to talk about all the things that's so necessary, and not to just turn up on set the first day and go, oh, you're my sister, and um, hi, how are you, and who are you? <laughs> so, yeah. Susie, can you talk a little bit about the costumes, um, given that this is Woody Allen's film set in San Francisco, did you have to go to San Francisco to do the shopping, or how did you, how did you end up with the look? How did no, you, you know, I think over the years I've worked in San Francisco a lot. I've shot in San Francisco um, years and years ago, but I've lived there, you know, doing off-Broadway tryouts for you know, before we get to Broadway on show, has been there a while. So I sort of knew the San Francisco look a bit. Um, I don't know, it's, it came together rather easily. I mean, in the end, um, I think the important thing for us was the juxtaposition between the New York and San Francisco scenes, making sure that all of that worked okay. That when you went to New York, there was the audience got a real sort of jolt. You know, and I think the editing there is brilliant, making all that work, you know, really sort of moves the film. Because it is two different forward. worlds. It really is two different, very separate worlds that have to come You know, but, but what's so amazing about the costumes in this movie is that Kate has a limited wardrobe with her in San Francisco, and you can see what it means to her, you know, her clutching that bag, you know, because that's her link to like her, her little her security past, blanket, yeah. You know, and her... To those of us who live in New York, you know, she's very recognizable Upper East Side type from those few pieces that she's wearing over and over again. And it really, you can see what they meant to her. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, well, you know, and we're so lucky, too, because Juliet Taylor, who works on the, so brilliantly on the casting, puts together a beautiful, beautiful cast that makes my life really easy. It's very rare on a Woody film for me to say so-and-so is playing a role and I go, oh, no, like, don't do this to me. You know, so this was really great. You know, they worked very hard. And that, you know, it doesn't make my life really difficult. Can I just say that, like, you know, Susie, that was an amazing experience putting on those clothes. 
And the clothes really did like help make the guy. But the first time I went to her great office downtown, I walked in and do you remember you said that? So I walked in and I saw all these racks of clothes and I went straight for these clothes that weren't mine. I went for Augie's clothes and I was like, these are great working man clothes. And she started laughing because she's like, you know what's hilarious is that Dice went for your clothes. <laughs> I was like, I love these jeans. <laughs> so Dice we, wanted to be Bobby and you wanted to. It was very funny, very funny. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'd never put on a pair of jeans like that before. Oh, no, he was horrified. You were pretty horrified. You were so good. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. But, you know, you get someone so handsome and great looking, then we can sort of destroy it. You know, we can sort of just <laughs> break it right down. Was the hair your suggestion? Whose idea was the hair? What? Your haircut. That was, was that your boardwalk hair. That was my boardwalk hair. I was just working on boardwalk, so I, could, I wasn't allowed to cut it or anything. And, um... Yeah, I guess it just worked And out. it worked brilliantly. I have to say it worked brilliantly. It doesn't always work that way in his films. You know, because sometimes he says, well, you know, we only have him for two days in the middle of something. And it's like, oh, uh, what are we going to do with that hair? But it worked brilliantly for your character. <laughs> and what is so funny, I remember you saying to me, like, no, Woody doesn't really like jeans. Yeah. Remember you told me that? Like, yes. He doesn't like jeans. Yes, yes. He's got all these little funny little things. things. Yeah. yeah. Hates jeans. Hates <laughs> jeans. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah, yeah, he let it happen. He let yeah, it. he let you in jeans. <laughs> yeah. as, working as, as his editor, how much footage do you get? Does he shoot? He doesn't shoot many takes. Is that true? Or it really depends on the film. You know? <coughs> sometimes no, sometimes yes. And uh, he, if he shoots many takes, he usually knows that maybe the first ten he wasn't getting what he wanted. So it's not as though there there's mountains of footage to really work with because you know there's the few that we go back and forth with a lot. Um, it becomes clear early on when we're working, you know, that even if there are a lot of takes, they're not always the ones that we're going to use. And was it challenging juxtaposing the two different worlds, the New York versus the San Francisco? I really thought it would be, but it was scripted so tightly. It just, it flowed really beautifully. And I thought that, you know, that was because of the writing. So I was nervous about it, but it all fit together really well. <coughs> Take some questions from the audience. Um, yes, right here. Uh, a general question. At any point did any of you ever think of Ruth Madoff? And the second question will be to Sally. But did any of you ever think about, because I came out of the film, it's my second time seeing it, because I, I wanted to see these performances again. Um, thinking of Ruth Madoff, who I hadn't ever thought about before, did Woody ever talk about that? Or did you ever talk about it? Woody never talked about Ruth, but Kate and I did. And okay. when I um, first met Kate and we were starting to work on the script, we were, that's what we were talking about. And um, and wondering if he got the inspiration from that story. And uh, um, so, yes. It, oh, sorry. Thank you. I hope it's been fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so yes, oh, um, um, uh, a, a little bit Kate Knight did, but, but no more than uh, beyond that first discussion and um, sort of when we were first sort of talking about their relationship and, and Jasmine and, and Ginger's relationship, we, we, we didn't, we, and the script and the overall, overall story, we sort of talked about that a little bit, but beyond that first meeting, not really. And I know Woody came at it from a completely different story, um, but in, in, in a similar world. The, the question about class, in, in British actors and British culture, there's a real consciousness of class. Right. In this country, we pretend there is no differences in class. Your character is so beautifully American to me, and I wondered how you made that transition from a classic sort of UK idea of class to an American girl? Um, I think it's probably the same worldwide, wherever you are. And um, Thank you <laughs> for your compliment. Um, so I, I think, yeah, I, I don't know um, how or what, how I made that, what one thing um, but there are many things that go into it with the accent work and the costume and, and this beautiful script and 
and your own work and um, uh, the relationships. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I think it, it. She's a. She has an American thing, and and the accent will help with the sort of the way she, she stands and the way she holds herself. And but it's a similar in the UK. Um, the, the sort of people have um, working class. You know, it, they, they have a particular thing, and it's a an air about them, or not too. <laughs> Um, it's the same with very high status people or, or, who, or people who, um, yeah, it's, it's just, it will always be particular to that character. It can only take it back to the character and, um, um, and what sort of things that they're, what worlds they're, they're, they're in and people, relationships they're in and uh, jobs they're in and, um, they're, you know, it's very be precise to them, their set of circumstances. So, um, I don't know if that makes sense, no, but, um, yeah, I think it's, it's probably the same worldwide, I think. It's a beautiful performance, really. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, you and the baseball cap. Uh, were there any alternate scenes uh, in regards to the story that you wanted to include in the film? You mean scenes that didn't make it into the movie? Were there any alternate scenes that um, were shot or in the script that didn't make the final film? Were there, were there substantial scenes that were cut from the film? Is that a question? Yes. There were a few. There are always a few because um, sometimes you find that even the scene might be great on its own, but it's not helping move the story forward or it might bog down in a certain place. And so, you know, the scene isn't helping the, the arc or... Um, or sometimes it just doesn't work and he's not happy with it and we work on it for a long time and he, you know, comes to the conclusion that it's not necessary. But yeah, there were a handful of scenes, not too many, that didn't make the final cut. But the story um, was the same. Absolutely. The the story was the same. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, yes, you were here. Yes, hi. Everybody, congratulations. It was really a wonderful film. Every aspect of it, you know, like the editing, the costumes. The performances were wonderful. Thank you very much for a wonderful performance. Uh, my question is um, technical. I was wondering, because the colors and the textures were very, very sharp and beautiful, I was wondering um, what, um, if you know, what did you guys shot with and how long was the whole film made? And then I wanted to ask you also, it, it reminded me very much like a modern streetcar named Desire. That's what I was thinking from mm. the minute the movie opened. Did mm. you guys make a reference? You character, especially with the wife bitter and like yeah. just everything, and you know, like Kate's. Yeah. Woody doesn't. Woody, Woody certainly didn't talk about it um, at all. Um, 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 we talked about it a bit. Um, I know we, you know, like we we would spend all day on set and never go back to our rooms, and so we had a lot of like smoke breaks. And <laughs> Kate had done the play, and I loved the play, and we did, we talked about it, but I mean, I think there are parallels, but I think it's just a wholly original idea. Um, and I don't think Woody would ever, you know, say that it was... Coincidence. Yeah, I think, he, think yeah. He, yeah, I think yeah. he would say that it's, it's coincidence, but certainly there are parallels there, but I mean, you know, it's a great story, you know, it's a great... Thematically, it's a great story, and but I think there's a lot going on in the in the, in the script. I think it, it draws from you know some people see a Madoff connection, some people see a streetcar connection. At the end of the day, it's an original idea, and I think there are even more layers to that movie that you can really uh, uh, you know really dig through. But as far as what we shot on, I don't know. I, it was shot on film, you know, 35 millimeter film as opposed to digital cameras because um, that's what he still likes to work with, and Javier is a really wonderful cinematographer. Mm. And, um, you know, Woody's always very particular about the look of his film. He likes very warm colors. Mm. So after it's shot, it gets color corrected, and that's a pretty involved process. Mm. Um, it's really pretty. Um, uh, yes, you right there. Yes, hi. You're not um, looking here. I wanted to uh, say how much I enjoyed the way you were able to play uh, the two sides of the character, the sides of the personality. Husband. Well, of course, that wasn't, wasn't meant to be one or the other. But how do you find that balance where you don't go too 
Um, thanks for saying that. Can you guys hear the questions or do you want me to repeat them? No, Could you repeat, repeat them? Um, that was a question about the two sides of Bobby's character, the lovable and the not so lovable side. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I think, you know, you know, I think, you know, Chile's working class, you know, and he, I think, I think he, you know, I, you know, I, I kind of made up some things for myself and I thought, you know, he works in a garage, probably, I think he probably had to go to anger management at some point. <laughs> Maybe like mandated. And then, and then he's, he's clearly very much in love with Ginger, and he must know her history with Augie, and Augie wasn't, you know, had some, they had some rough times, and he was probably aware of that. And, you know, what I like about the character, and one of the reasons that I, one of the, one of the differences I think between that character and, say, Kowalski is that you know for a, for a very sort of seeming blue seemingly blue collar sort of simple guy he's actually a very modern man you know I think that he's probably you know it's almost it's kind of impossible not to be cognizant of like the psyche of you know so, uh, you know you know we're we're so sort of aware of, the, of psychology now that you know I I think it's impossible for anybody to be completely unaware of what especially living in a sort of cosmopolitan city like San Francisco, I would think that, like, I like to think that, like, he's been doing work on himself. And, you know, he uses modern language, you know, when he says, you know, I got really mad, but I didn't say anything, I kept on the inside. Yeah. That's like shrink talk, right? It's like, so I just thought, well, you know, he probably, like, put his pennies together and maybe go and see somebody, like, once a month. And tells people, like, you know, I, I can help. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, so I just think, you know, I like him because I think he's trying. I think the whole movie is trying, you know, and, you know, you don't always, the results aren't always what, you know, what you're going for. And so, you know, you know, he, he, you know, he clearly loves her and so he's passionate about her and he's, he's right about Jasmine, you know, ultimately, I think, for him. And he ends up doing pretty well at the end. Yes, you have a question? Uh, yes. <clears throat> uh, I had a question about the editing. Um, I, I think that it's very, very different. Like yes, the, sorry. Just speak in the mic. <laughs> sorry. No, go ahead. Right. Um, I was very taken with the editing um, because I felt that right from the start, you had to be extremely abrupt in the switches from um, from San Francisco to New York, and I was wondering, you know, oh my God, is this going to work? Because I think normally um, the viewer is given a few sort of a little foreshadowing of the transition, and it seemed here you had to go directly. And and um, I was wondering whether you felt, you know, as a very experienced editor, that you had to really adjust to this new style of switching, um, and whether you found that challenging. Or... Well, you know, there. I'm not sure how aware of it you are when you're watching the film, but usually when you're switching, there's something that's leading you. A trigger, a trigger. Yeah, there's a, exactly, there's a trigger. And so um, whether it's as um, clear as an actual line of dialogue that's then repeated in the next scene, or it's just something that reminds her, and you see her start to zone out and go you know, into her flashback mode. So I felt that... Um, you know, there was always motivation to switch from one to the next, or we looked for it anyway. Yeah, I felt it was always in the dialogue, though, um, rather than a visual, you know. But, I, no, it finally it worked, because uh, I felt you, you were sort of geared up for it from the start, but it was jolting the first time. Yeah, you know, it's, it's true that in the beginning you don't know that you're going to be watching one of these films that goes back and forth, and sometimes there's a film where there's time jumps and... Um, but as soon as you realize that's going to be the structure of the film, I think you go with it. Yeah. So it might take you a scene or two to realize that that's what's being asked of you, but right. most people, <coughs> you know, I think, do the work and catch up pretty quickly. Yeah. Congratulations, anyway. Yes. That's very impressive. Mm -hmm. um, yes, you're right here. Yeah, I just had um, a couple questions I, uh, about accents, actually, because um, I noticed that there was a lot of New York accents, and it was in San Francisco, and that was sort of, I was wondering if that was sort of intentional. I didn't know at all that you didn't have an American accent, so I was impressed by that. But yeah. 
I noticed there was a lot of New York, especially like in the ball mm -hmm. scene. When it, there was a lot of just New Yorkisms, and I was just like, wow, that's so odd. And I was wondering if that was an intentional. It's a question about um, New York accents, even in San Francisco, and the juxtaposition of the accents, I guess. In what scene? The ball scene? The, 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 sorry, the what scene? Which well, there scene? was two. There was one where you were on, you brought your friend to the blind date. He sort of seemed very New York. And then the, the, the one where you guys are all watching the ball game. Yeah, and, right. And those guys seemed very New York too, and I was like, "Wow, New Yorkers in San Francisco is just odd and interesting." I just didn't know if that's intentional. Working class. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't think about no, it. No, there's San Francisco guys. I, I mean, um, I don't know. Just working class guys. Uh, um, I mean, he's Italian American. Works in a garage. I don't know. I didn't think about it. Um, um, and those two guys in that scene don't really say much. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> one line. Yeah, maybe, yeah. No. Yeah. No. I think for, for Ginger, she, she's she got a bit of, maybe because where she started, she, you know, she she grew up in New York, or just in the suburbs of New York, mm -hmm. um, um, sort of hinted at me. Um, um, so I, and then she went to San Francisco when she was quite young, so she's got very, lots of things going on, and and, and always people are sort of, they, they collect different things and they're sort of, they're not one, um, one thing. <coughs> they're, they're many different layers and, and sort of, and you've got, um, so, and I think that's, Ginger has, has that as well. So she's got, um, um, it's not clear cut, it's not that she's sort of just San Francisco, she's, she is also um, a bit of New York suburbs as well. So um, we were working with the accent coach, Carla. She um, was quite clever in, in making sure that we we set that as well and we had those layers in. So it, it may be Ginger. Maybe Ginger. <laughs> Bringing the New York in. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I think people are never just one thing. Yes, you right there. Oh, thanks. <laughs> what was the question? Mm -hmm. and, uh, Emmy. Sally, a couple of things. You, you are always a delightful on film. Are you that delightful person? No. <laughs> she is. Uh, she, is. No. she really is. Oh, she is. Is Sally a delightful person that she is on film? That's the question. No. 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 Yes. yes. No, you More than delightful. A dark heart. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. A question about improv. Did you guys imp improv some of your lines, or was it all in the script? The script's so brilliant, mm -hmm. and it's Woody Allen. You don't want to mess with that too much. Mm -hmm. He, he, um, uh, it doesn't, yeah, I mean, it, it's all there. It's such a, it's a be beautifully constructed scenes, and even the rhythm of lines, and they're like, and he, he, we sort of, if a particular word is not right, he'll, he's happy for you to sort of find another one. And he's happy for so the, the seams of top and tailing scenes, like the sort of the, the hellos and goodbyes. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's incredible. Like, he really does say, you know, he, he, he's really humble about his script. He's not, yeah. he's not precious about it. And, of course, we all know it's a great script. <laughs> but he tells you before every scene, he'll say... You can say whatever you want, and then, and then, and then when he's done, and then when he's got what he wants, like he, every scene I was in, he would say to me, "I got it already." You know, so you just do whatever you want, and then I would feel like compelled. To do something, and everything I did was in there, like you know, you know, like I exited, it, and he was like, I, "You know, you just go ahead and do whatever you want." So I knocked the lamp over, and he was like, "I love that." And I was like, then I got like kind of full of piss and vinegar, and I did it like in every scene. I think when I grabbed That's her to kiss you her, what, you know, that was the, that was one. And then when I kissed Kate, was one. But the lines, you know, it's just such a good script. Why would you do it? But then you have like funny little things that, you know, you learn about Woody. Like when like the TV scene. Remember like the TV scene? He said, he said, I want. He said, he said to Sally, I want you to come in and go up to the television and and just just. Turn it down. Use the dial to turn the volume down. And it was, you know, like 2012. And it's like a plasma TV. So I said, 
I said, you know, I said, what do you, I don't think, you know, you don't, I was like, you know, I was already there two weeks, so I, I don't know, I, I wasn't trying to tell you that my back. Yeah, 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 so I said, what you, I think, you know, she, I don't think you, you don't, nobody does that anymore. Like, the TV turns down, yeah, we have a remote. And he's like, well, where are we going to put the remote? And I said, you know, just on the table here. Oh, okay. And you're like, is he fucking with me or is he? You kind of always had me guessing, like, if he knew or he didn't know, and that's kind of fun. I think he always knows. I think he does, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, you. you. Uh, Sally, I wanted to compliment you because right from the beginning, I believe that you and Kate were sisters. And I, re I recently saw a film I won't go into, which I didn't believe that people were brothers. And it leads me to my question of, um, you're British, she's Australian, and you did some work of bonding before the film, of talking. Um, it, was it helpful that um, you were, you're British, she's Australian, in terms of having that kind of commonality of the crown a little bit, of, and then finding Americans? It's sort of an odd yeah, uh, I, question, but I'm wondering if that was a little bit of the bonding, too. Sure. I think, um, I, I don't know if it was to do with anything me being British and, um, and Kate being Australian, um, but maybe we both felt um, sort of aliens in, in, in strange lands. <laughs> yeah, and which is good for adopted sisters. And then it's so ironic, yeah, you're both adopted, and then you're both playing Americans. It's sort of yes. a, kind of a fool paradox. Yeah. I, I, I'm sure that did bond us, actually, and... Um, terror. Terror. Bonds. Yes, yeah. terror will yeah. definitely bond oh, me. Are we going to get away with this? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we, uh, yeah, it was, um, I remember meeting her in New York um, that time, and um, when I was there for Susie, which was oh, just the best costume fitting <laughs> in the world. But anyway, um, but yes, that, we did talk about, we sort of grabbed hold of each other, and, and I'm so lucky that it was Kate, you know. Yeah, I really did believe from the very beginning, because I always think you have to see the audience Thank in the you. first five, ten minutes of any film, but I, I just accepted it. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Uh, is that time was invaluable to us, yeah. to do that, and to talk about their upbringing. I don't know that. Right. Yeah, I really felt that. Okay. Next question. We have time for how many more? One more? We have time for one more question. Um, I can't see you guys in the back, but I want to add you guys. Someone in the back. Yes, you. Yes, you. Um, I loved it, every aspect of it. Thank you for a brilliant movie. And I guess I'm questioning post-production because we all kind of know Woody Allen is a writer, director. Is he very hands-on during the editing and also it has it changed over the years working with him? Uh, does your editing phase uh, last a certain duration in, in general, or how does it work? Um, yes, he's very, very hands-on, more so than most directors, actually, because we don't start editing until he's finished filming, and a lot of, um, most directors, I think, expect their editor to have completed an assembly while they're shooting the film, and then they come back and work from that, whereas Woody wants to actually edit in scene order. So once we have um, all of the dailies, we sit and watch them all together. And then that's where we put together the assembly. So he's, he's there all the time, very handsome. And um, I guess if anything's changed, it's just that, you know, you, over all these years, you get to understand someone. And, and I certainly <coughs> feel like I know what he likes and what he doesn't like more easily than in the beginning when I had to guess more. Um, but he is very communicative, so uh, he's very, very straightforward. And, you know, people think he's some, they think that he's his persona, which he's absolutely not. And the work is the work, and it's, it's you know, he takes it very seriously. And it's, it, you know, it goes really smoothly. He's a pleasure to work with. Because, you know, I like to say he's the least neurotic person I know in show business. Which, <laughs> I don't know what that tells you about everyone else, but, but you know, 
it, it's really very straightforward. And on that note, thank you all very much for coming.